Today's lesson is a physics lesson on the three states of matter. First, let's get your brains warmed up with a simple starter question. What do ice and steam have in common? Have a little think, 10 seconds to decide. Time up. Ice and steam are both different forms of water. Question two. What is the boiling point of water? 10 seconds to decide. boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. And question three, what is the opposite of freezing? The opposite of freezing is melting. Missing word game. Every substance made of particles is known as what? It starts with M, you have 10 seconds. The correct answer is matter. Every substance made of particles is known as matter. Matter exists in three different states. I want you to try and guess what they are called. The first letter is given to you. 10 seconds has started. One starting with S, one L and one G. Have a think. Here are the answers, everybody. So something can either be a solid, a liquid or a gas. And for short, we use something called a state symbol for each. So very simply, a solid is represented by an S in brackets, a liquid by an L. Oh, I wonder what the gas could be represented by. Hmm. Yes, that's right. The letter G. These are called state symbols. Next, I would like you to have a go at drawing a diagram to represent each of the states. So one for solid, one for liquid and one for gas. And you have to use a round circle to represent each particle. You've got one minute, off you go. Let's see how you got on. Your solid diagram should look something like this. You will notice that the particles are closely packed together and they are arranged in regular neat rows. Your liquid diagram should look something like this. Very different from the solid. So here, many of the particles are still touching one another, but they are arranged far more randomly. Your final diagram for gas should look something like this. My goodness, look how spaced out the particles are in a gas. None of them are touching and they are arranged very randomly. These diagrams that you have just drawn for solid, liquid and gas are known as particle model diagrams. These diagrams are very useful, but they are not perfect. For higher tier people, you need to be able to describe the limitations of particle model diagrams. The first problem is that all of the particles are shown as solid inelastic spheres. In real life, this is not quite the case. Another issue is that there are no forces shown between the spheres. In reality, forces are found between each and every particle. Because of these limitations, it means that a change in forces between particles and collisions between particles cannot be fully represented by these particle model diagrams. As we saw from our water demonstration, substances are not fixed in one state. They can change from one state to the other. So now we are going to look at changes of state and how they are caused. 
it would be helpful for you to draw a diagram for the next section. All you need to do is copy the particles for solid at the bottom left, gas at the top and liquid bottom right and draw two arrows going from one to the other. Use the words in the centre to label each arrow with the correct name for each change of state. One minute. Let's go through the answers. Firstly, when a liquid changes to a solid, we call this freezing. The opposite, when a solid turns to a liquid, is melting. Now let's look at gas. When a gas turns into a liquid, we call that condensing. And when the opposite occurs, the liquid changes into a gas, that is known as boiling. Interestingly, a solid can change directly into a gas, and a gas can change directly into a solid. There is one word to describe both of these changes. You may not have heard it before. It's called sublimation. Voila! Your finished diagram should look like this. It's worth pointing out that there is another word that can be used in place of boiling. It starts with E, five seconds. The word that can be used interchangeably with boiling is evaporation. Hmm. So, for a substance to be able to change state, there has to be a change in the forces between the particles. Now, this might be nice to demonstrate with a bar of my favourite chocolate. Quick quiz! How would I turn this solid chocolate into a liquid? I could easily do this by heating it. Hello, microwave. Let's pop it in. And give it 40 seconds. While this is doing, I want you to think about what is actually happening to the particles in that solid chocolate as it heats. Oh, let's see if it's worked. Ooh, look at that, yes. Just starting to melt nicely now. Ooh, I know what some of you might be thinking. What a waste of good chocolate. Don't panic. Melting is a reversible change. It's very simple to turn it back to how it started. All we need to do is cool it back down so the particles lose energy and gradually come back together. Just like magic! For a substance to change from a solid to a liquid, or from a liquid to a gas, particles need to gain energy from the surroundings so they can move more and spread further apart. The end result is that the forces between the particles become less and the particles spread out more. This happens in melting and boiling. Let me recap. Melting and boiling happen when the forces between particles become less and the particles gain energy and spread out. Time for your first learning check. There are three questions, you have five seconds for each. Question one, what does this particle model represent? The answer is evaporation. Question two, what happens to the forces between particles when a substance melts? Five seconds. The answer is the forces become less. Last question. What happens to the distance between particles when a substance condenses? Five seconds. When a substance condenses, the distance between particles becomes less. Did you get all three? Well done if so. 
The last section is about melting point and boiling point. Melting point is the temperature at which melting and freezing take place. This might sound strange, but here's an example for you. Ice melts at zero degrees Celsius, but this is also the temperature that water freezes. It's important to note that melting and freezing are not sudden occurrences. They are gradual processes that take time and changes of energy. Now let's look at boiling point. Boiling point is the temperature at which boiling and condensing take place. For example, water boils and steam condenses at 100 degrees Celsius. Different substances have different boiling points. Oh yes, why is that then? Why don't all substances boil and condense and freeze etc at the same temperature? It's all to do with the different forces between the particles. Some substances have very strong forces between their particles, whereas others have weaker forces. Let's see if you can recap that in your own words then. What determines the melting point and boiling point of substances? 10 seconds to have a go. Melting point and boiling point depends on the strength of the forces between the particles. A couple of quick questions to check your understanding. Which state of matter has the weakest forces between particles? 10 seconds. The answer is gas has the weakest forces between the particles. Therefore, gases have the lowest melting and boiling points. Next question. Which state of matter has the highest melting and boiling points? 10 seconds. The answer is solids. Final hurdle, everybody. The last learning check. This is called which state of matter? Multiple choice. Good luck. Question one. What is the state of matter of fluorine at room temperature? Gas, solid or liquid? The answer is gas. Question two. Which change of state takes place when a gas becomes a liquid? Sublimation, condensation or evaporation? The answer is condensation. Question three. Why does iron have high melting and boiling points? There are weak forces between particles there are strong forces between particles, or the particles are closely packed. It is because there are strong forces between particles. Question 4. Ethanol has a lower boiling point than water. Suggest why. The particles in ethanol are more spaced out. Ethanol has weaker forces between particles or ethanol is easier to evaporate. The answer is ethanol has weaker forces between particles. Final question. If a substance has a melting point of minus 18 degrees Celsius and a boiling point of 40 degrees Celsius, what state will it be in at room temperature? 20 degrees Celsius. Liquid, solid or gas? The answer is liquid. You finished. Well done. Luckily, I haven't finished all of my favourite chocolate. I managed to reserve some, unmelted. I'm going to enjoy it now. Dairy-free as well.